so I just wanted to take a moment to vlog a bit, um, because, yeah, my anxiety levels are higher than I thought they would be right now, um, I mean, looking, looking at the current situation, I'm actually kind of glad that I ended up losing my job when I did, because if I hadn't, the insect infestation in my room would have gotten like way bigger and way scarier before I discovered it because honestly my job was keeping me so busy I did not have the time and energy for properly maintaining my environment and yeah so I mean in, in some ways it's a good thing it happened when it did and not any later because other yeah just yeah it, it's and, and I've, I've been cleaning my room, trying to rearrange things so that I can um, basically see as much as possible, well, as much as within reason where the insects are actually hiding. Um, and as I tidy it, it's going to get easier to move some of the items away from the wall. Um, with the plan of trying to vacuum the area and trying to spray it with disinfectants um, to basically try to kill as many insects and eggs as possible. Um, I mean, for me, this this has been a big deal because I'm basically having to deal with my worst, my, my arch nemesis, basically, um, which is clothing worms. Um, and, it, you know, I, I've seen evidence of clothing worms in my things before, um, but in the past, um, it was the case that providing I didn't leave any natural clothing on the floor, like, against the wall, providing I didn't do that, my clothing was fine. My clothing didn't get holes in it, but as soon as I left them on the floor, like, right against the wall, then they would get holes. And... So I thought, well, I'll throw some, I'll throw some cedar balls around the room. I'll throw in, you know, maybe some packaged moth balls in there, and should be fine. Not so. Um, turns out that cedar balls do nothing, and um, moth balls are only helpful a if you take them out of their packaging, and b if the moths aren't there to begin with. If the moths are already there. There's only so much the mothballs can do to actually stop them. Like, it won't kill them, it'll just make things unpleasant for them. So, and, and I want to be, be clear that I'm not using the, the dangerous type of mothballs. If you look around about mothball information, you'll find that there are two different kinds. And the ones I'm using are the camphor ones. They're the ones that are natural and um, non... The, the, like, if you got a lot, it would be bad for you, but providing you don't start eating it or something, you're going to be fine. Um, the other ones, they would cause you serious damage and possibly cancer, so I want to stay away from them. Uh, but yeah, just, it's a scary time, because um, a lot of the stories I've been reading about clothing moths make them sound really terrifying and aggressive, but... Also, the information I've read has made it sound as if they're actually fairly easy to fight or get rid of, providing you take the right measures. Like, the people I've, heard, I've read about who really had a tough time getting rid of them were in situations where they had... Um, they, they, they not only had wool carpeting all through their house, but they were also reluctant to get rid of it. Whereas in my case, yes, there is a lot of wool carpet in my house. It's tremendously old wool carpet. So this this was kind of a ticking time bomb situation. Like, it was an inevitability that we were going to get some amount of moths in this house. But, um, and this is a big but, my room does not have the carpeting in it. My bedroom is all tile. So the reason, um, the and, and the only reason I had a significant... Um, clothing worm outbreak was actually because unwittingly and unknowingly I had created the perfect environment for them to live in in my room. Um, basically because the entire time I was working, and I didn't know this, but I had left a spray bottle full of water just rolling around my room randomly. And I didn't know it, but it was leaking. And one of the things that um, moths 
and their offspring love is moisture it really helps them to digest whatever they're eating and the other thing that I had done really stupidly was I left a whole lot of clothing in a pile um, on top of that moisture and then mixed in amongst it was nice things for insects like paper um, you know covered in you know Yoshi's poop and food with little bits of her poop and food and her, her paper and cardboard chewing strewn about in some corners. You know, I, I had unintentionally created the perfect insect breeding ground where they had food, they had moisture, they had, you know, um, protection from the elements. They had, you know, almost everything they would need to thrive. The only thing I could have done to make it better for them, perhaps, was to have put a heater in there and been heating them and I think that to some degree I had been functioning as a bit of a heater for them because I was I, I know that when I'm sleeping I give off a lot of body heat like I overheat when I'm sleeping really easily so basically I had created paradise for insects and in particular paradise for um, clothing moths because yeah since I'm trying to be a kimono collector slash dealer I have a lot of silk in my room these days, and some furs, and some um, wool. And what hadn't been, like, one thing that I'd been misled about early in my career um, was the idea that silk is somehow invulnerable to, to moths, which is absolutely not the truth. And, and as I've been going around, I've been finding that a lot of the things that people say about getting rid of moths, there's a lot of conflicting evidence about it. Um, some people will say you can get rid of them with cedar balls, some people will say you can't, some people will say the answer is, um, well, okay, the, the main the main weird thing about it though, and, and part of the reason I didn't figure out that it was moth activity for so long, is that they were not really targeting my silk and wool clothing as much as I would have expected. And they seem like when I would find a a cocoon from them or a, an egg pod or whatever, it was usually attached to um, a piece of acrylic or polyester clothing. So it didn't it didn't immediately register with me that moth activity was necessarily what was happening. And I mean, realistically, there was the possibility that it was just silverfish or something more controllable like that. Um, but yeah, basically, um, this whole thing of discovering these creatures in my room has brought me face to face with my greatest fear, literally. As in, I opened up one of my tabby socks one day and there was one of the, the, the little caterpillars, red face poking out at me in one of the, the socks. And I, ha I was looking at it, it was looking at me, and both of us were just horrified by what we were seeing. And, you know, I so I've been throwing things into the wash, trying to get rid of these things, and they seem to be going away. But then I've been reading these other things that say, no, you can't just wash it off, that washing doesn't, isn't enough to kill the eggs and the larvae. Which, again, it surprises me, because when I got those tabby back, the worm was definitely, like, the caterpillar was definitely gone. But, you know, I, so one of the things I want to do is take my th my clothing out to a, a laundromat and use a dryer to just dry everything in batches and, you know, heat them up. Because a lot of people are saying in a, in a dryer, they will, there will be enough heat to kill them, basically. And, but I, I'm also thinking, if I go and do this, and I haven't successfully killed enough of the moths in my room. Um, I, I will just be bringing the clothes back into a moth-ridden environment. And they're just going to get reinfested, reinfected. And, like, I should be clear and say that I've only seen... Like, I've, I've actually seen very little moth activity in my actual clothing. And even where I have seen activity, it's usually cocoon formation. It's not usually um, actual eating of fabrics. It seems like, and, and thank goodness, but the, the moth 
activity has been restricted to just a few stray pieces of silk, um, like scrap silk that I had left lying in that pile. And for the most part, they just seem to have pooped all over everything else. And, you know, but I have some awareness that some of that poop might actually be eggs, so I'm wanting to be careful anyway. Um, like, I, I, and I've had these continuing fears of, well, hang on, I'm wanting to sell clothing. What, what's going to happen? Am I just going to be infecting other people's wardrobes? But it turns out, no. It, again, because they're so vulnerable to heat, and you, you don't even need that higher heat. They die at, like, 50 degrees Celsius. So... If I just iron everything before I send it off, everything inside that piece of clothing will be dead. Like, or not just the, not just any moth eggs or whatever that might be hiding in there, but also um, any other pests, oh. and any other sort of um, bacteria or insects, and just, you know, ironing things as I go to photograph them even makes sense. You know, it, it makes sense that I would have a process of they arrive with me, or I pull them out of storage, I iron them, I hang them up and photograph them, I list them, I pack them in a box with some mothballs, and, you know, I, I, I can't help but think they would be okay, especially since, and this was the really surprising thing for me, a lot of the items in my possession that I would have thought the moths would have made an absolute beeline for, they did not touch. Even the really high quality silk stuff I have, even though they, they, like, I could smell some decay in some of the better silk items I've got, and I'm going to want to take them to a dry cleaner either way, like, I could not actually see signs that the moths had actually done anything to those particular items. That really surprised me, and it really... It, like, for, as far as I can see, the moth activity is actually very much localized to that area that had the clothes stacked up, that had the, the dirty, poopy, you know, foody stuff, that had the moisture, and that's actually really consistent with what I've been reading about moth activity, that moths tend to preference dirty, oh. damp clothing over really clean, really, um, you know, like, if you keep your clothes clean, the moths are going to be less interested in them anyway, and, yeah, just, I, I don't know the full story of what goes on with people who have had chronic and recurrent moth infestations, and to, to the point where it's been a big problem for them, maybe they're just ill-informed on how to rightly get rid of moths, I don't know, but I'm going to just do the best I can with the resources I have. Um, my long-term plans are to regularly um, vacuum in my room. Like, to, to keep my room to a standard where I can do a regular vacuum. And also, I'm, I've ordered in some citronella incense and some citronella oil. My plan is to take the cedar balls that I have and soak them in the citronella oil and then throw them basic, well, well, no, maybe not throw them, but I might put them in strategic places around my room. I'm also going to throw the incense into strategic places in my room. Um, and, you know, I've got mothballs. I've been dropping a few here and there as well in amongst the items that I have basically already gone through. And I haven't ironed them, but I have sprayed them down with eucalyptus. Again, I find it very hard to believe that anything can survive eucalyptus and mothballs together, like, that both are just so chemically overwhelming, it's, it's very hard for me to believe that an insect would be having a good time there. Um, yeah, and I, I could be wrong in that, I, maybe I should take them all and just iron them, but the, the reality is that if I'm going to just stand there ironing everything one by one right now, like, that's a lot of time I could be spending legitimately vacuum, vacuuming and spraying down my, my whole room. And I, so I feel like that's a better immediate use of my time. And one of the thoughts I've tried to comfort myself with in all of this is that even if, even if some of my stock does actually get moth damaged, 
there are things I can do about it. I can take the fabric that remains after eliminating the moths upon it, and I can take that fabric and I can remake it into a jacket or something else, something nice and, and useful and pleasant, and then I can, um, yeah, I, I can even stick the whole jacket in, in a bag with some more mothballs, and yeah, like, why not? You know, it's not, it's not an insurmountable situation by any means, and, and when you consider that throughout my life, like, this is the first time I've had a significant moth experience, despite the fact that I'm living in a house that is very ill-kept, um, very dirty, very dusty, full of, as I've mentioned, extremely old wool carpet. The fact, like, it's, it's pretty remarkable that I haven't had more significant moth problems than I have historically. And... Again, it, it, everything that was affected by the moths was pretty much on the ground. Like, providing I, they were not touching the ground, they were not affected. And, and when I say that, I don't even mean, like, like, in a box. I mean, literally, they had to be on the ground. Like, even if they were just in a cardboard box, they were safe. Which, again, it suggests to me that the problem is actually a lot more controllable then people make it sound. It's just that you have to be consistent in taking the right steps. And I feel like after what I've seen, after what I've been through in this past week, I've been, I'm pretty motivated, especially since I really don't want anyone else to be adversely impacted by this. Um, as it, as it is, I'm, I'm concerned because there's steps I took when I was less knowledgeable about this problem that may have exacerbated it but again it just it really seems like providing you clean things providing you um, take the right steps to protect things that it just doesn't happen to them but the, the other thing that I want to point out is that there was a, a factor that that kept the moth situation from getting too out of control and that was that at the same time that this moth infestation happened, there was a rival um, spider infestation that happened, and the spiders were basically feeding on the clothing moths and their, their babies. So there was only so, so far the moths were actually getting before they were getting killed and eaten. And, I mean, granted it wasn't 100%, the spiders weren't getting all of them, as far as I can tell, but they were getting enough that the problem wasn't as bad as it could have been. And so, yeah, I, I feel like it is just a question of being really um, careful to try to clean everything. Um, I'm going to be um, spraying some additional um, disinfectants uh, in, in certain corners in the room. Um, a lot of people have been saying you, you should really wipe things down with hot water to really kill the eggs, but for the way that my room is laid out, I don't think that that's actually practical or possible for me, um, just because there's, there's so many little nooks and crannies, and some of them are impossible to fully eliminate. So I think the more realistic thing is for me to just go around and try to vacuum into those areas, and then try to spray them over with some, some good you know, disinfectants or antiseptics, um, and yeah, I find it, yeah, I just find it very hard to believe that the moths can survive that, uh, because ultimately they are still insects, they don't have magical mystical powers, they're insects, and, you know, people are talking like, oh, you can't just wash them off in a normal laundry, okay, but if, I, I find it hard to believe that the eggs, if they're submerged in water for long enough, wouldn't be destroyed like if if like because no one's ever heard of these moths being aquatic so presumably they don't want to live in water presumably they drown eventually so you know I have had some things soaking in buckets um, just again trying to make sure that any eggs in them or on them are dead 
Um, yeah, and my plan is to basically, yeah, keep, keep on cleaning and rearranging the room until I have it in a way where it will be relatively easy for me to vacuum where I need to vacuum. I'm also going to take um, one or, like I've already taken down two of my closet doors but I want to do at least one more because, partly because that will help my work to become much more efficient but also partly because I, um, yeah, it, it seems like if your clothes are exposed to a lot of air and light again the moths are less likely to be attracted to them and so I'm uh, yeah I'm wanting to put the clothing that I want to maintain in in a position where they are going to receive more light and air and movement basically and yeah aside from that I don't know how to go much further it like it, it's frustrating because some of my vintage items that I've saved have ended up with some musty smells in them and again I've been spraying them down with eucalyptus trying to get the smell out um, I've put some mothballs on them again trying to get that smell out um, basically because you know I think a camphor moth smell a uh, mothball smell is better than a musty smell I mean either way I would still say to to my clients or customers you know if you get something from me and it does have a musty smell in it. I'm sorry, but that's the nature of vintage, and I recommend dry cleaning it. Um, I've thought about offering my customers the option of me dry cleaning for them, but that adds this variable expense on top of what I'm already charging them, and you know, it, it's not like the customer can't take things to the dry cleaner themselves. There's, as I've said, there's a few high value items I have that definitely have really musty smells in them and I do want to take them to a dry cleaner, but I'm with those items, I'm not sure that I intend to sell them actually. I think that I intend to keep them into the future and then one day when I have a physical store, I'm actually going to have them be part of photographic experiences that people can pay for because they are very nice kimono, they're, they're a bit special and yeah, I, I could try to sell them but I wouldn't be selling them necessarily at a price I'd be satisfied with and I could possibly make more money by providing those photographic experiences in the future. However, However, the rival argument can be made that the whole time I'm saving them, the space they're occupying is space that could have been occupied by, by stock I would actually rotate. And so, arguably, I'd be better off selling them and then buying more kimono for that purpose later on in the piece when that does actually happen. Because between now and when I actually have a physical store. I don't know exactly how long that's going to be yet. I'm still working that out because basically, like, I mean, initially I was thinking about going for the cheapest rental property that I could find in Melbourne and just opening up shop there, but I found it, I looked at it, and the area it was in, uh, it was just such a sad looking area. And I did not feel any confidence that it was going to create the kind of positive, vibrant shopping experience that I wanted to be able to give to people. And also, I did not feel confident that the kind of people who would want to be my customers would necessarily be living in that area. So I thought, no, I'm going to hold out until I can afford a space that is at least in a better area. It mightn't be a better space, it might still be a sucky space, but at least it can be somewhere where I can be more confident of getting the quality foot traffic I would want by having a physical location. And yeah, so, and, and also just in the meantime, I wanna spend more time getting trained up in business skills, visual merchandising, marketing, all of the stuff that I would need to know to really, really do this business quality. So, yeah, given that I'm thinking in such large long-term frames, it 
it makes sense in a way that I would focus on selling right now rather than on oh you know here's this retail experience I might be able to provide one day I mean the reality is that I have already bought some of the equipment I would need for having a physical space but I'm thinking I can use that when if I open up a market store which I could very well do in the near future because um, there are there are a lot of little pop-up markets that run stalls but I mean, as it is, transport is an issue if I'm going to go for something like that. And right now, I still don't know how to drive. And I, But I'm thinking learning how to drive would help me in that path. But anyway, um, that's, that's beside the point. The point is, moths, clothing moths exist. And if you do the vintage clothing thing like I do, in any capacity, it's kind of an inevitability that they're going to become an issue for you sooner or later and so perhaps rather than waiting like I did until they become a problem it's better for you to learn about what moths enjoy so that you can avoid creating those conditions within your living environment and then you may not have to worry as much about moths as I've had to because yeah um the just, this experience alone has completely transformed my perspective on the concept of vacuuming regularly and ironing regularly. I mean, already I had a better opinion of vacuuming regularly based on, you know, concerns about dust inhalation. But just, I mean, if a person does vacuum and iron everything regularly, the reality is that their odds of having a significant moth problem are just it's just so much lower it's so much lower <sighs> and so yeah I, I am processing a lot of anxiety surrounding this concept at the moment because it's a new situation for me and it's it's a situation where I'm having to confront one of my biggest fears just biggest fears like as yeah it, it's terrifying to me but you know it, as I've said there, there are things that can be done to control the problem. There are con things that can be done about it. But also I think I need to work on just getting confident that, that things can be okay. Even though I live in a world where a thing like this can happen. Because, yeah, even Parliament House has had moth issues before. Even Parliament House. Like, I used to think that if, pe if I ever had a moth problem and I admitted it to myself and I told people about it, that I would be banned from society but no it's it's actually quite it's quite different a lot of people have empathy because they've been through it themselves and yeah so yeah anyway I better get on with it <laughs>